think it was this video actually that came out. Okay, so let's watch it together. Me and you, chat. Don't invite anybody else, all right? It's time. The new Mr. Beast allegations are absolutely disgusting. So the ex-employee who exposed Mr. Beast, Dog Pack, has finally released his part two video titled, I work for Mr. Beast, he's a sociopath. And this video goes over some very serious allegations by a former contestant named Jake Weddle. Now, legal disclaimer, I cannot confirm any of this. This entire video is covering their allegations and I'm simply reporting the news. So some of the things being alleged are Jake Weddle was borderline tortured in a Mr. Beast challenge called 100 Days in Solitary Confinement. Apparently, he was not even allowed to see sunlight and had bright studio lights on him and cameras 24-7 so that he couldn't sleep, which may potentially fall under sleep deprivation, which is a form of serious torture. Apparently, there was an incredible amount of pressure to stay and complete the challenge as well, even when he was falling apart, so to speak. Another allegation- Which is basically, by the way, the stuff that they do on reality TV. It's how they get content out of reality TV. ...is that Mr. Beast had a convicted SA offender with a child victim on the Mr. Beast team and on camera in one of the videos as well, which is absolutely insane for a channel whose viewer base is full of kids. Dogpack is also working on a part three video that goes into further horrible accusations regarding potentially covering up essay situations. Uh, also, I know Mr. Beast's secret CEO has been practically like harassing my people on, you know, hey, what's in part two? What, what does he know? So I will just tell you, James, what will be in part three, so you don't have to harass my people. It will be about serious allegations of, of school misconduct uh, in the company and your direct involvement in covering up those crimes. During the 100 boys versus girls video, uh, I have people corroborating the same story that the, the camera guy who gave the girls a drone was making some girls feel uncomfortable. You trap these girls in a circle and, and make them sleep on rough turf and, and get them high on paint fumes, and then, and then you try to them. All right, so that's obviously mm, going normal stuff. Ooh, love it, love it, love it. Normal, normal, normal. Taxi Panda Bear, think of it 20 months. To be a nightmare for the Beast PR team, but let's just go over this situation, see what's going on, starting with Jake Weddle's experience filming the solitary confinement video. I'm Jake Weddle. If you, if you know me from Mr. Beast, I'm, I'm a deep cut. I'm in a few of the videos, sometimes maybe purposefully kept to the shadows a little bit. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in the cutting room floor a lot of the time. The pitch is a uh, hundred days in solitary confinement, uh, but don't worry, like you only have to last like 30, we have like a video. And they're pitching it like a, oh, it's, at first it's gonna be like a luxury vacation. You're gonna have like a hot tub and an ice cream machine. And like part of the video is gonna be you deciding like what, what, what items am I gonna get rid of, you know, today? And it's like the choice. They were like, uh, it's only going to be bad for the last, like, five days tops when you have, like, nothing left. You're the first, it's going to be like a breeze for most of it. And, uh, by the end of it, after 30 days, you're going to get $300,000 because it's $10,000 a day. Okay, so apparently it was pitched as a sort of vacation, uh, a really easy challenge where you can earn 300k, where you'll have a hot tub and an ice cream machine. But then he goes on to explain the alleged absolutely horrid conditions on the set saying that it smelled really bad and he didn't even get to sleep and was suffering from insomnia even after the challenge. And uh, I mean, they, they had just freshly painted the set. You could smell Dude, it, you know? I, I don't know how... Um... It's really been three years. Jesus heavy using over here. <laughs> Hope you're well fed. Jealous, thank you for the 43 months. Holy shit, thank you. Um, I will say... As someone who sleeps like a rock, like, I really, I am a rock, okay? Every time I have Airbnb with someone or even shared, like, a bed with someone or whatever, I'm always like, no, don't worry, man. I, I sleep through anything. Once I'm asleep, I'm asleep. It's really, like, the hour or two before I wake up that I'm, you, you might, you might wake me up if you do some shit. Like, if I'm supposed to wake up at six, from the hours of four to six, then I'm a little bit more susceptible to being waken, woken up. Do you snore? No. I sleep like a rock. Like a rock. Like when I was younger, I would fall asleep on the couch. And one of my family members would pick me up and throw me on the bed. And I, I would, I'd be like, how did I end up here in the morning? Like I am, a, you could start fucking banging pots and pans. 
as long as it's not the two hours prior to when I'm supposed to wake up, I'm gone. I'm, I'm out. The only thing that wakes me up is that fucking annoying ass alarm clock in the morning. That good alarm clock. But, yeah, I sleep like a rug. And I feel bad for the guy who was in this video who was actually dealing with sleep deprivation because, who could not be me, dude. Could not be me. All right? <laughs> Once it gets to a certain point, especially if I don't have video games, if I don't have video games to play, um, I'm a corpse, dude. I'm a corpse. I don't care. Pain fumes don't give a fuck. Toxic fumes don't give a fuck. Loud noises don't give a fuck. I don't care. I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping. I'm hibernating, dude. Wake me up in the winter. Whereas I feel like People who have a normal amount of like, not not light sleepers, but whatever is the normal amount of lights, light, somewhere between light sleeper and heavy sleeper. Man, that sucks, huh? <laughs> you guys just don't fall asleep. Oh my God. That's horrible. Oh my God. I feel so bad, dude. That sucks. A standard sleeper, the mid sleeper. Yeah, yeah. No, I, the only thing that won't, it, the, there's one thing, actually, I lied. There's one thing that won't let me fall asleep. It's too damn cold. I, I don't mind waking up in the middle of the night being, like, drenched in sweat and being like, huh? Oh, it's kind of warm. No, 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 no. That's fine. I don't care. Uh, wake me up in a puddle of my sweat. That's fine. But when it's freezing cold, I can't get it. I can't get a good night's sleep. I can't. I can't. I, I, and the worst part is I cope every time because I'm already so comfortable in bed and I'm like, it's okay. I'll get warm. <laughs> Three hours later, I'm getting another blanket. <laughs> I'm getting another blanket. This is insane. <laughs> you was sweaty. I do be sweating. I love the heat. I love the heat. I hate sweating in my sleep. Honestly, I, I there was a period of my life where I was sweating in my sleep every night. I would just wake up sweaty every every morning. And I was like, I really should change like the temperature on my AC or like on my thermostat. Or I really should like change my blanket. Whatever. I'll do it tomorrow. And then I'd wake up like drenched in sweat the next day and be like, whatever. I'll do it tomorrow. And then eventually I was like, okay, <laughs> this whole waking up every morning and showering is getting really annoying. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. I hate showering in the morning. I'm fixing this. So, was the temp 80 Fahrenheit, though? No, it was uh, 73 or something, 4, maybe. It was more that my blanket was too warm. That was the bigger problem. Mayor Cat. <laughs> All right, back to the video. Which, that's probably not good, you know, the smell of fresh paint in your surroundings for the next XYZ time. A hot tub that's not connected to a filtration system. Give it three days, it's gonna stink. And the ice cream machine, let's talk about that for a second. The ice cream machine has two modes. On, and off, reeking of smelly, dairy, mildew. Like, That's fucked up, dude. Like, so I got to Wait, choose which one little. sense was assaulted at a time. I, I couldn't have all of them good. They weren't, they weren't turning the lights off. You know, I asked them, I said, can we like, have like nighttime hours? You know? And they said no. Oh, this is another thing that I'm sick for. I, I have no problem falling asleep in the daytime. I love a good nap. I love a good nap. It doesn't matter how much light there is. I don't care about light. I don't care about how much light there was. But also, I think that's because, um, don't, don't laugh at me, guys, but uh, I was afraid of the dark for most of my life. I only got over my fear of the dark last year. <laughs> I, I was just like, it's fine. It's just darkness. And I'm like, and then my brain would start imagining horrors beyond comprehension. And then I'd be like, <gasps> say psych. No, I'm so serious. I'm so serious. I just have a very vivid imagination. And I get a lot of nightmares. But I think I ended up getting so many nightmares that um, I kind of grew the fuck up. Just like, oh, look zombies that are coming and trying to bite me alive and kill me again 
Real original, guys. Real original and dream department. Anything new you guys got here? So I think between that and I finally tried um a sleeping mask. And that like stopped me from getting scared about the darkness, which was cool. And up until that point, I would just have a lamp on. Just all, all the time. I would just have a lamp on. That was it. I don't mind. I don't mind. I like the daytime. But also I was like, I was so sleep deprived at one job because I was trying to do like 25 hours a week of a job and like five classes in one semester and normal amount of workload. And I started taking my lunch break at work to go to the park and nap. So I'm also a bit of a napper. So yeah, I don't know. I feel bad for, this is another one. I feel really bad for people who need it to be dark to fall asleep. That sucks. That sucks so bad, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> That's terrible. Feels bad, man. Because it would fuck up the time lapse shots. The time lapse of what? Me sleeping? Or me not sleeping? Okay, I got no access to the sun. I got no access to the clock. I don't know. Like, the, the, the lights are on me all the time. I wasn't sleeping. I, I could not sleep. And I, I have insomnia problems now. Um, it, but I, I, they might have started there. And I go up to my friend, my, 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 my good friend. And I go, I go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. Oh, oh, good. 24 hours breaking the Geneva Convention, I guess, is what we're doing. He said, uh, Jimmy said, uh, can you say to the camera how thankful you are that now you can pay back your student loans? That is absolutely Whoa. awful to hear. So he's claiming that they allegedly almost tortured him and then asked him to basically thank the cameras for it. Now, I don't know if it actually qualifies as like a war crime because that seems a bit much, but regardless, it is a horrible thing to do to someone, especially from supposedly the kind-hearted god angel that is supposed to be Mr. Beast, right? And if this is true- I mean, it's also like, I love how um, when people were getting into- I guess, discourse, because people were saying that there's something about Mr. Beast that's a little bit uncanny. And there's something about Mr. Beast that puts people off. I think me, as well as many other people said, hey, it's just that he doesn't care about anything except making as much money as possible. That's all he cares about. That's all he's ever cared about. And it just so happens that going around and building houses for poor people or whatever gets views. And that's why he does it. He doesn't actually care about being a good person. He doesn't care about doing any of those things. He cares about making money. And if he does good things on the way there, sure, whatever. I'm sure the people who are being benefited by that appreciate it. And I don't really care to step in past that point. And some people got offended by that idea. I remember when I said that there were people that were mad about it and they're like, excuse you, he actually cares about being a good person. I'm like, then why doesn't he do any like fundraising ever? <laughs> why is it that all of the good content he does and all the good things he does have to be monetized in videos of his? Huh? It's so weird, huh? Guys, we got to surf and chat. I don't know how anyone's upset by this. This guy could have voluntarily left at any time. I would have gone through all of this torture for 10K a day. That's light work. Okay, you've been following since 21 seconds. So you have to have clicked in because of the title. So do you have any comments on maybe what brought you in in the first place? Like, I don't know, Mr. Beast hiring a sex offender? a registered sex offender knowingly? How about you respond to the thing that mm, maybe you clicked into the stream for? Oh, you don't want to respond to that one. That's, I get it. Yeah, 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 of course. So, of course, how silly of me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My bad. It could be a serious problem for Mr. Beast and the whole team because there's been a ton of allegations of people accusing Mr. Beast of using money to get people to do things that they wouldn't normally do in a sane mind. 
I mean, presenting it as a vacation and then turning it around into borderline torture is just not a good look. At the very least, if they ever do something similar in the future, it needs to be monitored by some safety authority or something because the reckless disregard for the health and safety of contestants in these challenges is just ridiculous at this point. Even from the recent Beast Games allegations with people claiming to be injured, denied medication, and much more. I mean, you just can't subject people to this type of stuff and say that it's perfectly okay because they signed up for it. Well, I mean, it seems like they didn't know what they signed up for. And when you dangle life-changing money in front of them, it's going to affect their judgment drastically. Now, here's some... Also, yeah, the other thing, actually, that's very interesting about that. Sorry, we got to go back. It's really funny because... I think a big part of um, uh, Squid Games and even the remaking of Squid Games into a version of it that didn't have people dying for the money. I think Netflix did a version of it where people just had to be, you know, tortured for the money. <laughs> Many people criticized it and critiqued it as like, aren't you just doing the original show premise, but just slightly less bad? You're still missing the point of the show, which is, Poor people will be tortured for the entertainment of rich people for life-changing money. Isn't that kind of fucked up? <laughs> Isn't that a little bit fucked up? No? And is Mr. Beast signing people up for things that they didn't know that they were being signed up for and then telling them, well, I guess you don't want this life-changing money. Is that not torturing poor people for your entertainment and for the masses' entertainment? Which you gotta admit is kind of, uh, I don't know, crazy. Kind of crazy. Also, really quickly, I just gotta say, I like how when I bring up the fact that this guy is a, a registered sex offender, he says, isn't it gonna be dropped from his record? Oh. Oh. Guys, it's totally cool to be a registered sex offender and have your victim be, let's see here, uh, one to 11 years old. Because, guys, it happened in 2010, which basically means it didn't happen. It's going to be dropped from his record, so it's fine that he assaulted this small child. Yeah. Going to be honest, though, dude, weird hill to die on. Weird hill to die on. But, hey, if you want to defend the pedophile, please. I know a streamer that you might really like. goes by the name Sneeko. Might have heard now, of here's some text messages he shared as well. Hope you're doing well, man. That video you uploaded is money. So good. I appreciate. I'm doing better physically. Mentally, I'm still kind of in a place. I still can't sleep. I've slept five hours in the past three days, marathon included. I don't know what's wrong with me. Lots of thinking too much, one might say. Hope they're taking care of you where they can. I mean, I was kind of shocked they didn't pay me for the full 25, 30 days. They paid me what I made up to that point. Like even when we have to pull the plug for my mental health, the mechanism of the game is still at play. I'm just happy to be out. I still can't walk well, but it hurts less. Off camera breaks, lights off at night, visitation, take the marathon out. Marathon is a video in itself. You can't expect someone to exert themselves like that for 45 seconds of content. The challenges really made it feel dehumanizing. Felt like a parody of Mr. Beast. I felt like the homeless guy they could exploit. Okay, so Mr. Beast defenders are obviously going to be like, suck it up. You signed up for it. Oh, you want to win 300k without it even being hard. Well, you know, that's one way to look at it. But also, is it really necessary to not turn the lights off at night? I mean, that part is cut out of the video, so why would that be needed? I mean, why make a guy who hasn't run a marathon run a marathon until he allegedly has, like, blisters and stuff like that and his feet are hurting so bad? It's just kind of hurting him for entertainment. He goes, you're gonna, you're gonna run a marathon. You're gonna do the two... 22.6k, whatever it is. You're gonna do it on that treadmill over there. People who run marathons train forever, and it's still hard. Did you try to say no? Like, did you have a choice, or...? There was so much pressure to just do it, just do the thing, you know? Then you, you get up, and I, if, if I refuse, it's just, well, that's the whole video. I guess the budget's, you know, so much money up in flames, because Jake said he wouldn't want to do the thing. All right, I got off the treadmill. Oh, the blisters I had on my feet were like, you wouldn't believe, just all over, just these big red, I couldn't, I couldn't walk, my, my, my muscles were like, just, the lactic acid, I, I, 
I got off the treadmill and then the people that came in to like ice my feet, you know, make sure I was good. Then that's when I was like, I'm done. I can't. I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I don't know. In my opinion, there's just better ways to do it. I don't even mind if you just tell everybody, hey guys, I'm being open and honest. I'm faking the videos. I'm making it a TV show. I'm going to be turning off the lights at night and giving him a break, right? But instead, he has this weird obsession with insisting that everything is 100% real and authentic. And that ends up hurting people, it seems like. Now, in the future, if you do actually fake it, then, you know, let people know so they don't call you a liar as well, right? And so that contestants are not misled about the challenges. Now, Dogpack also shares an internal document in Mr. Beast where he basically shows the company spirit. And one of the sort of instructions there is that no does not mean no, which is an insane phrase to use but it's not actually talking about consent. It's more like if I tell you to do something, keep trying to do it, even if people say no. <laughs> he could have said no, he could have left at any time. I wanna show this segment from uh, an internal document at Mr. Beast called How to Succeed in Mr. Beast Production. Specifically on page 19, there's a paragraph called, no does not mean no. Ooh. Already insane, uh, because it's sort of, it seems Ooh. to be co-opting the popular <laughs> anti rape slogan which is a terrible look given the allegations that are gonna be coming out very soon. Uh, it reads, When dealing with people outside Mr. Beast Productions, never take a no at face value. If you need a store to buy everything inside of and you call the local Dollar Tree and the person that answers says, no, you can't film here, that doesn't mean shit. Talk to other employees and see if there are fans or if any have kids that are fans. Try talking to their boss, their boss's boss. Have me DM them on Twitter, try their social team. If after all avenues are exhausted, you're still left with a no, that doesn't mean don't try the other Dollar Trees because the manager of those could be huge fans and willing to bend the rules. Basically what I'm trying to convey is what we call pushing through no. Don't just stop because one person told you no. Stop when all conceivable options are exhausted. This is one of the tools that when combined dramatically improve your probability of success one when producing here. All right, so it's basically saying keep trying to make the thing happen and don't take no for an answer, which is okay, except the phrase is a very weird choice and probably made a lot of women uncomfortable, but all right. Now, Dogpack also claims that this sort of mentality might lead to some shady business behind the scenes. For example, if an employee is pressured to make something happen, or, you know, they might lose their career for it, then they might be incentivized to tell half-truths or lie about small details to get certain things to happen that would normally not happen. Anyways, now we get to, in my opinion, one of the most concerning parts of the entire video, where Jake says that the Mr. Beast team has been working with a convicted SA offender. Well, there was a known offender, registered offender, convicted offender on the registry and everything who worked there. From what I hear, I, I can't confirm or deny, from what I hear, he's on the registry for doing some not great stuff to some underage people. And they knew that. And he's working at a channel that has underage people on and around and is targeted to underage people. And they covered up the fact that not only did he work there, but he was like the manager when it all started. Wow, that is absolutely horrific if that is true. Um, getting those vibes of, I don't know, Dan Schneider, Nickelodeon, all of that weird stuff. I mean, how did this possibly ever happen? Nobody who has done that type of stuff to a child should ever, ever, ever be allowed anywhere near kids or to even work on a channel that has so many kid viewers. It is just completely unacceptable. Again, I'm praying Mr. Beast did not know about this, but still, it is bad because it is his responsibility to monitor who is being employed under him and at his company. Now, it gets really bad when we allegedly have video footage of the guy in a Mr. Beast video. He'll be in videos. He'll be in thumbnails. He's, he'll be around. And whenever he, he, he is, he's wearing a mask. Why would you wear a mask? Why would you conceal your face? It's like, you, what, what are you concealing? That you are in registered under? and that your face could be looked up on a thing? How much more can you literally cover up a sex offender? It's like, why, 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 do you, why do you call him? And like, to be very clear, guys, I, I want to talk about something. I, this is a good opportunity to highlight this very quickly. Registered sex offenders still need to leave, live. They still need jobs, need to be rehabilitated in society. Unless people are advocating for the death of all sex offenders, I don't understand the issue. I think part of the issue here is sex offenders in general, si child, Oh, sorry, the, I think that the issue here is that the sex offender is in a child-centric career with Mr. Beast, right? Yeah. So really quick, I don't think that people should change their morals or value systems because of exceptions. So I am not for the death penalty. I think the death penalty is bad. I don't think that the state should have the right to execute anyone. Um, and I don't ever want the state to have that right. 
not just because it's more expensive, the death penalty is more expensive than uh, imprisoning people for life, not just because I don't think that the state has that right, not just because the state can make the mistake of executing the wrong person, but also just on a moral level, just I don't want that. I don't want us to just go around killing people that we don't like. I think that that's a bad society. I think fundamentally, I can dislike this person and I can want to see them dead, but I don't think that we should put that into law. In the way that like, perfect example for this, if you find out that some pedophile assaulted your kid and you stab the guy accidentally, he trips into your knife 500 times. This story has happened in the news many times. I'm going to look at that and say, yeah, I mean, what did you expect, man? Like, <laughs> I can't even really be mad at the, the parent there. I, I can't. Like, that's, I get it. I understand that it seems like not. I can understand the mentality is what I'm saying. And I don't condemn that person for responding that way. However, that doesn't change my opinion that I don't think that the state should be executing you. There, it's important to stick to your values, even in instances that you personally feel very strongly about. How is death penalty less expensive than life imprisonment? Um, the legal proceedings that go behind everything related to the death penalty. Because if you're going to kill someone, you need to be 110% sure you're killing the right person. And even with that, we're still not 110% sure every time, which is why we've accidentally executed the wrong people sometimes. Um, and so there's all like legal proceedings that go on for decades and just, okay, we have to put in this form and then we have to put in this form and then we have to talk to these lawyers and then we have to talk to these lawyers and then we have to, so that all gets very time consuming, very expensive for the state versus just putting them in a jail, putting them in a prison. You don't need the same burden of proof. So, yeah, um, And I'll thank you for the two gift subs. Thank you. So moving on. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that we should allow the state to go around killing sex offenders and executing sex offenders. I don't think that that's a good idea. I just don't think so. I think that just it's a bad road to go down. And I don't think that the state should have that power ever, personally. Um, with that in mind, like, okay, dude, go rehabilitate yourself somewhere away from children. Maybe Mr. Beast, someone whose entire branding is around kids, who does a bunch of events with kids, who does a bunch of videos with kids, maybe that guy should not be hiring child sex offenders. And if you are this person, the person who, who is in this, these videos that is being called out right now, hey man, how about you go rehabilitate yourself somewhere not around kids, man? Do it literally anywhere else. I don't know. And maybe Mr. Beast has like a like responsibility to make sure he's not hiring predators. As an idea, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It feels like giving an alcoholic a job as a bartender. It's like, to be clear, I'm sure that that exists. But Maybe you shouldn't be around the thing that, you know, you got convicted for. Maybe as an idea. And the person who made that decision, fucking stupid decision, dude. Yeah, and people have been bringing up the, um, the Delaware comment. Uh, I'm trying to find, where did I put it? I must have misplaced it somewhere. I had it, but they were referring to him this it so they went in and found the video that he was in which is this video oh my and God, surprised dude. like what your wife's in connecticut this is actually perfect what if we literally trashed everything again and then we replaced the house oh my God. this vi oh my he was God. in this video and then he was also in this video um some people were saying they're not the same person here's the here's something that helps you out more in the second photo de in the out-of-state statute typically stands for Delaware, which is literally his nickname. All of this lines up. 
His nickname was Delaware because... What the the crime happened in Delaware and everybody knew that. Why everyone trying to blame Mr. Beast for somebody else's actions? Dude, I'm surprised you can even like breathe with Mr. Beast's cock straight down your throat like that. That's crazy. That's pretty impressive. You trying to take uh, Nancy Reagan's throat go title? Shit, man. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. Delaware. I didn't, I didn't know. Apparently they called him Delaware because he's not allowed to go back to Delaware. I mean, what is going on? Why is a guy like that just randomly in your videos with a mask on? I mean, allegedly they called this guy Delaware because he's banned from Delaware for his disgusting crimes. I mean, that's insane. Why are people joking about that? I mean, I, I'm hoping there's some other story to that nickname. The dude's brother-in-law said he was called Delaware, not that he can't go back. Oh, okay. His brother just spoke up and said, here's the truth. Yes, Delaware is my brother-in-law. He's an RSO. When he was 21, a 16-year-old girl accused him and, of, uh, and others of essay when she was 11. Delaware took a plea deal. That's why there was no jail time, but he still had to register. His nickname isn't Delaware because he can't go back to Delaware. He's from Delaware. That was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. He was hired before I was, and actually the reason I got hired at Mr. Beast before being hired, Delaware sat down with Jimmy and Sue, Jimmy's mom, Explain everything to him. He asked Jimmy knew, but again, this incident happened in 2010. Delaware was hired in 2017, 2018. He was also let go from the company before I was. He's supposed to be a behind the scenes manager, but in a couple of videos, he was asked to partake because he needed people. He was reluctant, especially in the straight jacket video because of charges he wore a mask. His charges are said to be dropped in the fall. Delaware has been nothing but a good person, amazing husband of my sister and best uh, father of my two nieces I could ever ask for. They want no part in this and they just want to live their lives away from the limelight. I understand why anyone would be upset, frustrated over these allegations. I don't blame them hurting kids in any way. Uh, unacceptable. In the case of Delaware, I firmly believe he did nothing wrong. Look forward to the day these charges are dropped. <laughs> what is this exchange? So you're cool with pedophiles as long as they're family. Interesting. Justice had been served long before I knew him. Next. Wait, so like what? Justice being served? <laughs> That's it? Oh, justice was served for something? Oh, then you're good, man. Um, no. <laughs> also, yeah, somebody else brings up a good point. The hypocrisy of you speaking out about how awful of a person Chris was for doing the same stuff as the person you're now praising is just saddening. If you genuinely cared for the protection of young people, you'd keep the same energy regardless of the person. Yeah. Also, Chris didn't... From everything I saw, there was one instance where... Well, there, there was one twit post that was really long... But a lot of these people got into, and, and also the situation with Ava was a power dynamic issue. That's my understanding of the situation between two adults, okay? There was no grooming involved. And I think everybody on the internet especially agrees that something there's something more offensive and horrific about involving children. But moving beyond that for just two seconds, first of all, Ava is not a registered sex offender, okay? Second of all, all of these people were calling for Ava's head, including this guy. I was trying to remember where I remembered seeing him, and I remember why now. He called for Ava's fucking head after the Shadman poster. It was not a cut and dry situation like this one is. So to defend this and be like, no, dude, some random girl accused him of this when she, that he did this when she was 11. Hmm. He's a really great guy. That's interesting that you said that. That's very interesting, man. Okay. Okay. Hmm. All right. Okay, man. Name because that sounds really bad. And it actually gets a million times worse because a very concerning clip of Mr. Beast allegedly referring to this man by his disturbing nickname, Delaware, 
is in a video. Credit to Upper Echelon for his video here. During the I spent 24 hours straight in insane asylum video, in which Mr. Beast did not spend 24 hours in any such thing himself, Zoro is a main contestant. However, at 9 minutes and 12 seconds, Mr. Beast himself states, don't touch Delaware's cracker during one of the joking meals that they were given. He's after my long guy. <laughs> that simple innocuous slip presents a very big problem. If Jake Weddle's testimony is accurate, which I believe it is, having compared the height of Delaware, or Zorro, to that of Chandler, as well as eye color, hair color, weight, facial features, etc., it all checks out. If Jake Weddle's testimony is accurate, it means that not only was there a convicted offender working at Mr. Beast, convicted of explicit acts with a victim under the age of 11, by the way, but his nickname was the state in which those crimes occurred, which Mr. Beast himself openly used. I mean, if this is all true, this is some really sick stuff. Why are they joking about that name if that is the story behind it? Why is that man allowed on set when he has a criminal record for one of the most heinous crimes? I mean, in my opinion, if you're going after minors, that is just absolute bottom of the barrel, absolutely horrid stuff. And this has got to be by far the worst allegation yet. I can't believe it's gotten worse than the illegal lotteries and everything else. Allegedly, they're trying to expunge his record too to cover it up. Also, apparently before this phone conversation got recorded, the person on the other end of the line said that the Mr. Beast team was actually trying to expunge Delaware's record. Uh, off the registry. Everyone at your company knows, but somehow you don't know. Um, I, I think that needs- Also, just because you can expunge your record doesn't mean you didn't fucking do it. Like, I don't know why we think that that's suddenly a defense. What? <laughs> More of an explanation than just saying, I didn't know. Well, how didn't you know? How, how did this person get into the company and, and you know, a company that makes content for children and, and is around children? So yeah, Jimmy, I think we need an explanation from you. Or Honestly, it is your responsibility as the leader to make sure nothing like this is happening at your company. I mean, I get it's big. I get there's a lot going on, but this is ridiculous. First, we had Ava Chris Tyson. Then we had a host of other allegations with the legal lotteries, beast games, all of that. And now something like this. It is so concerning for the biggest channel in the world to have uh, potentially an offender on their team. I mean, I wish it ended there, but something more has happened that is slowly making the beast team look even more guilty. So besides the cease and desist that they sent uh, Dog Pack here, apparently the beast team is going back several years in the past and quietly editing out portions of videos, deleting over 20,000 comments, purging entire sections of their videos and comment sections in an attempt to hide anything that could be considered shady, could be considered illegal, considered controversial. Once again, shout out to Upper Echelon for his video here. What he did do is launch another video. This one, the newest one, is about surviving 100 days in a nuclear bunker. This right here is the 36 hour period of time where the comment section of that latest video was scraped repeatedly and archived. Green is the total number of comments posted, Red is the total number of comments allowed to remain on the video actively. Over that one single 36 hour period from August 4th to midway through August 5th, over 26,000 comments were deleted at a consistent rate, as well as in two very large major batches. Here's a complete list of the comments, by the way, where you can see things like this showcasing that all at once for various keywords and phrases, dozens or even hundreds of comments will disappear in close proximity to each other. For example, Comments simply containing the word script were suddenly mass deleted. Comments containing the word fake were mass deleted as well. This right here is a video from six years ago where Mr. Beast decided to tip delivery guys $10,000. But if you scroll down, there's a jump in the most recent comments from 10 days ago to one month ago. All comments from the entire month of July were purged from this video. Damn, the Shadman poster is actually there, end quote. Mr. Beast went back to a video from six years ago he deleted an entire month of comments, as well as stealth edited a portion of the video out to hide things. Here's a complete list of the edits made to the Mr. Beast videos over the past couple of months for anyone curious to go look for themselves. This is all the stuff they're trying to hide on a plate for you. That channel, once again, shout out to Hoboon, who is an absolute fiend when it comes to archiving data. As of August 1st, that channel pulled down four unlisted videos. These four, we have them right here. One of them is a fragment of the live stream where the alleged illegal lotteries took place. This one starts right from the beginning with a stone cold statement by Jimmy 
that he will be signing the t-shirts, but he'll try to convince his team to sign them as well. They removed a roughly 30 second section where Jimmy says to the camera, probably shouldn't break the law because being in jail sucks. And then a part where he asks Chris Tyson, if you were to ever go to jail, what would it be for? which is an odd thing to go back and edit six years later. Okay, so that is a lot of things to delete seemingly out of nowhere. Who has the time to track this? People making YouTube videos on it? <laughs> I already made up my mind on the Mr. Beast stuff years ago when I tried one of his burgers and it gave me food poisoning. Yeah. Clearly, there's some sort of panic going on at the Mr. Beast uh, headquarters. I mean, Chucky, the Mr. Beast employee, recently sent a screenshot to Drama Alert that his nuclear bunker video had a 99% like ratio, basically saying there was no negative comments or dislikes at all. And here you are deleting 20,000 comments. That's more comments than my latest several videos combined. So that's, that's a lot of people. And you're censoring potentially hundreds of thousands of people from their voice being heard. So obviously that's not adding up and the reasonable conclusion is that there were more dislikes than initially reported. And now you're trying to hide certain videos. I don't even know what other shit is there now because you're deleting everything. It is absolutely insane. And as Upper Echelon points out, it could be a cover up. I am just dumbfounded listening to all these allegations. I am patiently waiting for Mr. Beast and his team's response to all of this. Hopefully they can clear something up. But uh, this is looking really bad. Till the next one, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wrong music, I know, right? <laughs> kind of crazy YouTubers can have that amount of silencing power in their comment section. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's this story? Relevant? Uh, I've ru heard rumors from people working close with Mr. Beast that he's hiring PLS to investigate those speaking up against him. Thank you to those who've reached out to me, reached out to warn me. Um, I have confirmation from several people that individuals are indeed being offered money to fabricate stories about me and others. I have identified some of these people already. They began harassing my friends as of last week, and I'm keeping up with all the receipts. Is this the woman that spoke up when she said that uh, one of the, she was in one of the, is, is this her or, or is this not her? I don't remember. There was someone who said that they were in a Mr. Beast video and they had won or they had like basically won and, and she was like robbed of her victory. It was her? Yeah. 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 Fucking. Yeah. I, I think honestly for a lot of people, it's just that Mr. Beast is. Very inauthentic, but he insists on being authentic and he insists on like trying to pretend to LARP as like this person who does things out of a good place in his heart. And everybody knows that he doesn't. Everyone knows that he does it for money. And I think it's like, I think a lot of people don't really care that he's getting canceled. If you could say that right now. Just because they don't like that he pretends to LARP as a good person instead of just being honest and saying, I just want to make videos that do well on YouTube. That's all I want. And people like to see this. I'm not going to sell you guys some authentic, I just care about making the world a better place. People don't want to see that. They know that that's not why you're doing it. So also, that's why nobody gives a fuck about Mr. B's getting canceled. Plenty of idiots do buy it. I mean, yeah. He does get to do good things for clicks, but I doubt he would have ever built those thousand wells in Africa or whatever if he didn't make a profit off of it. Yeah, 100%. I got yelled at when he did the ghost kitchen shit and I said it was a ghost kitchen. That was also very weird. The blatant cash grabs like with the ghost kitchen dog shit burgers that apparently gave people food poisoning. Ugh. Ugh. Right? It's just gross. It just kind of puts a bad taste in people's mouth. Just like, mm, I don't really like that. It's kind of like the difference between him and maybe, oh, fuck, I don't know, like, who would be a good example? Someone who shamelessly makes content. You know, you know who's a good example? Fucking MatPat, dude. <laughs> Fucking MatPat. That guy just makes videos and he doesn't give a fuck what he's making as long as it gets views.
And I respect that type of uh, behavior, okay? You know what? You want to make your dumb, stupid ass videos on whatever the fuck? Have fun. Go for it. Go for it. Have it. Have as much fun as you want to. I don't know why you lied that you don't masturbate. That was weird. But other than that, yeah. But if suddenly MatPat was like, I'm trying to make the internet a better place by putting out theories. But that's just a theory. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? You're just making YouTube videos for clicks, dog. Stop. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> or like, can you imagine if like, better example, Philly D put out a bunch of content and made a bunch of Twitter posts and built his brand around like, I'm trying to be someone who's a beacon of truth and honesty and genuine reporting here. It's like, no, dude, you're making videos on the internet. You try to be accurate because you have a responsibility to be accurate. And that's based. Thank you for not pretending to be this saint and just being someone who makes YouTube videos. And I think, again, that's why people don't like Mr. Beast, because he pretends to be this saint that does things out of, like, the goodness of his heart. When in reality, it's like, no, nah, dude, you're making videos because you want to make videos. It's, it's, not, it's not that complicated. It's not that complicated. Hey, you're a pretty good chatter, man. You know what? I take back my harsh statement. I, I, like, I like any chatters, and I respect any chatter that comes in with a little bit of smoke and then is like, hey, actually, I didn't know that. Okay, good to know responding to the the original message for anyone who missed it was uh i don't know anyone's upset about this he this guy could have voluntarily left at any time i would have gone through all this torture for 10k a day and then growth okay i didn't know any about the any of the context about the sex offender i do believe in rehabilitation but that guy definitely shouldn't be working near kids rehabilitated chatter